Okay, I don't need to tell you this, but if you've recently looked at the drinks menu in a bar or restaurant, then you know that one of the fastest growing parts of the overall alcoholic drinks market is non-alcoholic I know this because of you. Yeah, I can't stop talking To be quite honest. It. But BCG has the numbers. Are you ready for them? Yeah. Okay, 7%. It's the expected compound annual growth rate of non-alcoholic drinks globally through 2027. That's when the drinks will comprise close to 4% of the overall market. Surprising to me that it's not higher, but it's a big market. Why is it surprising to you? Well, I thought it was growing, going oh. to grow bigger. It's a huge market, and it's yeah. still a tiny part of the market, but it's growing extremely quickly. Again, data from IWSR cited by BCG. Now, the rise of non-alcoholic beer is something we've t spoken about quite a bit with smaller players, such as Athletic Brewing. Not so and small anymore, I guess. No, yeah. exactly. Uh, and you are a fan. Fan. Big time. Yeah. Uh, and even the global behemoths, uh, including Anheuser-Busch in Bev. Listen, people are looking at what's going on in the marketplace. Okay, we've never actually had a, on a guest to talk about non-alcoholic wine she is our until first. today. Rachel Martin is a winemaker. She's the founder of Oceano Wines. She joins us here in the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers studio. How are you? I'm great, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Okay, so I, I think the joke that everybody would say when you talk about non-alcoholic wine is like, okay, is it just grape juice? It's definitely not just grape juice because we ferment the grapes to wine and then we remove the alcohol. How do you do that? Removing the alcohol. Yeah. It's a spinning cone column. Okay. It's a form of vacuum distillation. So why do you think that non-alcoholic beer has seen this rise, but it's like much harder to find non-alcoholic wine? Is it harder to create a good non-alcoholic wine than it is non-alcoholic beer? I think it's more difficult because with wine, you're starting out with a fresh ingredient, grapes, and with beer, they're dried ingredients. So I think it, from out the gate, it's a more difficult process. Um, and uh, yeah, the non-alcoholic wine market is growing, but the quality has been low to begin with. And you know now we're seeing more high quality. Oceano Zero was the first ultra premium non-alcoholic wine to hit the market. So talk to us a little bit about how you got here, right? Because you've been in the industry for a long time doing, I'm assuming, alcoholic wine. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I still do alcoholic wine. I got into the industry, my family owns a vineyard and winery, and I went to the University of Bordeaux School of Enology to prepare myself to run their business. And then I fell in love with a particular vineyard in San Luis Obispo, California, called Spanish Springs, and I founded Oceano all based in homage to that vineyard. And then getting into the non-alcoholic space, um, I was looking to reduce my consumption of alcohol a bit, moderating, not eliminating alcohol from my life. And I tasted other products in the market and I realized that fine wine was not being made non-alcoholic. I love that you went there. I was just, I think this weekend, I, I think I was reading through the New York Times app and reading a bunch of stories and all something, something kept popping up. And it was, an, it was a wine, but it was less alcohol and less sugars and organic. And I, I was kind of interested in thinking about kind of my own world. And not that I'm, everybody thinks I'm a wino because I talk about it so much, but I'm really not. <laughs> She's but I, not, I promise. <laughs> and it's really Spend hard a doing a work week to kind of, so I'm beginning yes. to think more about this or something that's not alcohol, you know, no alcohol because I like the taste. Well, wine is an integral part of our lives and socializing. But alcohol maybe isn't the right choice uh, for particular moments. And that's why non-alcoholic wine is so great because you can have it at brunch or you could, you know, or you can moderate. So you could have, you know, traditional wines and then at the end of the night, you know, move to non-alcoholic. Are you trying to replicate the taste of a wine that has alcohol in it with well, these mm. varietals? Well, the great thing is that I don't have to do that because I'm starting with a traditional wine. So in our non-alcoholic wines, it's wine um, and that, and a little bit of sugar to balance in the absence of alcohol, a little bit of potassium carbonate to lower the acidity, but everything else is natural to the wine. So you're, you're smelling Chardonnay and you're smelling Pinot Noir. And you're actually allowed to call it wine, right? It, yes, because, because it is wine. Be, okay, because I've noticed that some of the beers question. that yeah. I buy that don't have alcohol in them, they don't actually say beer on them. What do they say? They say brew. Oh, interesting. And I don't know if there's some like type of law that they're not allowed to say beer. I don't know the answer to that question, um, but for non-alcoholic wine, some brands, they're adding back juice or uh, water okay. or adding 
flavors, but we don't have to do that because the quality of our wines are so high to begin with. So go back to how you make it. So, because we have, we, um, as anybody well, first, used, Carol, I'll, I'll, what? You, if you're driving <laughs> on, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're driving uh, out to Pismo Beach, okay, on Price Canyon mm -hmm. Road, all you do is take a right turn <laughs> and then you find yourself at the, uh, the vineyard. vineyard. Yeah. You know this really well. Yeah, I, uh, I actually visited the vineyard unknowing, no. not even knowing that it was your vineyard, uh, gosh, probably back in December. Yes. Well, I fell in love with the vineyard, as I said, because of its proximity to the ocean, which you can actually taste in the wines, okay. and we'll get into that. Um, but it's such a unique place that I knew I could make wines that you know, were, had a sense of place, which is why wine lovers, you know, go to wines for that, you know, it's just, it's more than beer. It's more than other, you know, beverages. Wine is something that we know is the greatest beverage, you know, ever made. Well, there's nuances to it, right? And as you say, <laughs> like, I think about that too, like near the ocean, like you pick up um, those elements. So is it, okay, so go back to the, we do have a lot of folks on um, who own vineyards around around the world, and we love to get into kind of the nitty gritty, and there's a lot more of an environmental component. We've talked with organic wines. Um, is it made exactly the same way? It is. So our grapes are sustainably certified. So they're grown without herbicides or pesticides. Um, and all the water is naturally available on the site. Um, but we, f as far as like other vineyard owners, it's a great opportunity, you know, if you have excess grapes or your winery and you're looking to appeal to more customers, um, then non-alcoholic wines is a great thing. There is a, you know, reduction in consumption of, of alcohol in general and wines in general. So it could be a great opportunity for wineries to get into the non-alcoholic space. But so how does it become non Okay. No alcohol. Like so, that's why I want to understand the you difference. Made it, of like, when you explain it, you made it sound very easy and simple. Is. But like, so I, I kind of need a whiteboard or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, what's the difference in the process? Are there some beakers we could like? Where use, does all of a sudden like, like the alcohol get sucked out or whatever? Okay, so or you 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 take the wine and you put it into a machine. It's called a spinning cone oh, column. This is what you okay. Uh, so that's a stainless steel column with a series of cones that spin, and what that does is it spreads the wine onto a into a thin layer, so making it easier to extract through vacuum distillation the alcohol. So first the aroma compounds sit on top of the alcohol, they're removed, the alcohol is removed, the, the aromas are added back into it. What do you then do with the alcohol huh. that you remove? Is it, can you do anything <laughs> with it? Yes, you That's absolutely can. Can you make hand sanitizer? Like, what, what can you do with it? You can uh, clean your tanks with it. Okay. Uh, you could also use it as an alcoholic beverage. Like a little moonshine or something? Uh, something like that. Okay. You could, you know, pour well, it on ice. It just got more interesting all I mean, honestly, <laughs> pour it on ice, put, on, yeah. put a little yeah. tonic put a wedge of orange or something, and I think we have a new product. Okay, there you have it. Um, making non-alcoholic red white, is it as easy? Is one harder? Uh, people say that a great non-alcoholic red wine is the holy grail. Mm. Um, so it is more difficult to make um, better red non-alcoholic wines. However, um, both of ours are really great, uh, but, but that's what consumers are looking for is that really super high quality red non-alcoholic wine because it's very hard to come by. And you think you've pulled it off? I do believe I've pulled it off. And it's not only me that feels that way. We have a big uh, waiting list for the next release of our Pinot Noir. So what we'll be tasting today is our last vintage. And it sold out super fast at the highest price uh, non-alcoholic wine in the market. It, and it is relatively expensive, I would say, for, well, a, bo for a bottle of wine. Okay. $45. 55, 55 for our Pinot Noir, 45 for our Chardonnay. Yeah. Now, when you remove the alcohol, you're seeing a 30% reduction of volume. Oh, okay. So okay. you have to make up for that. So your costs go up, and then the cost of removing the alcohol. We're going to continue this conversation. We're going to sample, actually, these wines in just a moment. do want to mention, though, some headlines crossing, certainly in the aftermarket and into the Thursday trade. And more maybe they're gonna have wines. A, maybe they're going to all be like, this. I can have a glass of wine exactly. because of this. Maybe with alcohol. <laughs> we passed. Hey, before that, let's get a check on the latest world and national news. I want to get back, right back to Rachel Martin, winemaker and founder of Oceano Wine. She's here in our Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio. We've been talking about non-alcoholic wines. Can we stop talking and try it? That's what they've been... <laughs> well, I was going to say, 
she doesn't just produce non-alcoholic wines, even though that's what we're talking about. Right. What before we try the wine? Okay. okay Carol's like really wants to try it, uh, and I do too. It's almost five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. What <laughs> What portion of your sales now are the non-alcoholic versus alcoholic? Well, we're growing the non-alcoholic, um, but it's you know, it's more wines with alcohol yeah. than without. But that's just because we are you know. The amount that we're producing, you know, we're selling out basically of the non-alcoholic wine fast. But do you think? Like, do you anticipate that you might give up on the alcoholic wine and just go non-alcoholic because um, it's been so I, popular? Well, I don't need to do that because we have customers for our traditional wines, right? And that's how it all starts. Mm -hmm. Our Chardonnay won Domestic Wine of the Year. Our Pinot Noir is ninety-three plus points. So we're making great wines with alcohol, but you know, we're looking to. Uh, meet the consumer where they are because they want lower alcohol wines, which is so exciting because I'm just announcing it that we're getting into the low alcohol wine. So we are launching our first low alcohol with the Syrah, mm -hmm. and that will be Syrahs. available October 1st, and that's 3.5 percent. As alcohol. opposed to what, like a 12 percent that would yeah, so our, have usually? It, when the Syrah originally is 13%. Okay. So we brought it down to 3.5%. Because not some consumers aren't looking to eliminate, they're looking to moderate. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a great option for them. Tweak it down a okay. little bit. Carol's like, enough talking, not, time for drinking. You're done, yeah, buddy. I'm done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so tell us about what you brought. We've got a Chardonnay and a Pinot Noir. Absolutely. And our wines, all of our wines can be found on our website and more information about them at OceanaWines.com. Um, but this is our Chardonnay. Now remember, this is our award-winning... Smells like a Chardonnay. <laughs> domestic Wine of the Year Chardonnay, just with the alcohol removed. So um, if you look at it, it's got a beautiful color. It looks, you know, it is it is wine. It looks just like wine. It's crystal clear. It's you know, it's got this gold flex. And then if you swirl it around in your glass, that's how you this taste is a, wine. I, I just have to say, this is a tough job, but somebody has to do it. Like, um, we have, we have yeah. to drink wine a little bit. And you, know? you, you have yeah. the notes of um, green apple, citrus, yeah. jasmine, a little bit of green melon. Um, and on the just, palate, when you taste it. It has a good yeah. mouthfeel which is missing in a lot of non-alcoholic wines, but the way that we make our wines, it has body and volume independent of the alcohol. And there's something that stays, like, you know what I mean? Like that it, wine, at, that after yes, feel kind of? It has length. So the wine and flavors stay in your mouth after you've swallowed, and that is supported by the acidity in the wine. Go to the red, because that I'm so curious now about. Now this is our Pinot Noir. Um, this is our first ever mm. vintage of non-alcoholic wine. This is the 2022 Oceano Zero non-alcoholic Pinot Noir from Spanish Springs Vineyard. So we, um, you know, this again is our 93 point, you know, uh, Pinot Noir, just simply with the alcohol removed right so it's um you know it's got a gorgeous color lots of aromas coming off yeah. of it plum nice I raspberry feel a little bit of blackberry and kind of some I woodsy like this. notes oh, i like yeah. this so in terms of the market you said you're sold out already is that correct for the non for the for the pinot noir we're completely sold out we have a lady waiting list for the next vintage the Chardonnay is currently on the market. We just released it May 1st, and we're selling through quickly. What are you hearing from, like, restaurants and bars? And Like, I'm assuming that's the holy grail at this point. Yeah, definitely, and I've been in conversations with masters of wine mm -hmm. about our non-alcoholic wines, and what's exciting is they already know about Oceano Zero. Yeah. And um, because the market is booming, Restaurants are looking for not just any non-alcoholic wine, but these quality non-alcoholic yeah. wines for fine for fine dining. You, you see that on menus now. It's it's wild. There's an entirely new section, right? Uh, yeah. That you hadn't you wouldn't see a year ago. I'm wondering about distribution because you keep talking about that it's for sale online. Are you sold at brick and mortar at all? We are sold at brick and mortar. For example, in New York City. Um, Spirited Away, which mm -hmm. is in Soho, um, you could find our wines there, but we have distributors. So we're distributed 
in the mid-Atlantic, northeast, um, in Missouri, as well as California for both our traditional and our non-alcoholic wines. But to keep up with the market demand, not only for our wines, but the growth of the category, we're looking for investors. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that we can yeah. meet the demand. Interesting. Con continue, yes. What do you think is going to be the real big growth area? Is it the alcohol removed or alco alcohol lowered kind of um, area? I believe it's low alcohol okay. um, because that's what most of the market is looking for and that's to reduce their consumption and not completely eliminate it. But non-alcoholic wine is great for whatever your reasons that you choose not to drink alcohol, but you could have traditional wine and then switch to non-alcoholic yeah. wine. In the UK, I think it's really cute. They call it zebra striping. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Those Brits. Those Brits. But there's yeah. enormous, you know, opportunity in both no, what they call no and low alcohol wines. No and low, yeah. Um, how, we're Bloomberg, we love numbers, we talk about money all the time. How much do you need to raise? Like, what's your target here? 1.5 is my target, yes. And that's for, you know, building out the program of wines and then also having a more robust direct-to-consumer experience, getting, you know, our own tasting room. We don't have one of those at this time. And then expanding beyond our borders. You know who loves wine? Silicon Valley Valley billionaires. <laughs> they, they all buy vineyards. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah but just anyway. Just throwing well, now they can get into non-alcoholic wine <laughs> yeah. or low alcohol with Oceano. Listen, it's very fascinating to see how um, the beverage market, the alcohol, no or low alcohol, like how it continues to evolve. It's really fascinating. It's Rachel, very good. thank you so much. Yes, I was going to say, and you can follow us on our socials to see what we have. We've got lots going on this summer. Oceano.0 and Oceano Wines on Instagram. All right, well, looking forward to come back again and we'll hear how things are going. Rachel Martin, she's winemaker and founder of Oceano Wines, joining us here in our studio. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. A lot of fun. And it's not even a Friday. But how did this happen? And an excuse to talk about <laughs> California. I know. That's what I like. Tim has been in his glory. It's like going back home. Yeah. Kind of, almost. It is, really. All right, this is Bloomberg.